Hey there, Box Critter fans. Thought I'd give you guys a quick peek at how I put together a room. Uh, you'll see here is the new Starship Bridge. This was provided to me by my great artist and longtime friend, Dan. Uh, Dan actually worked on the Mech Mice concept art, a lot of the different projects within Mech Mice as well for all these years. So he put together this great room for me. Uh, usually how it works is I give him a couple notes, he sketches it up, we get it approved, and then uh, he starts working on this higher end, high quality version with the line art and the colors. Uh, in Photoshop, he uh, lays it all out for me, separates it in different layers, as you can see here. And um, the first thing I do is I usually, uh, well, I actually export out the background and create one file. And then I separate it and I just show just the layers of the sprites or objects that I want the critters to be able to move around with. And this is of course where the tricky part, uh, the tutorial I'm going to show you here. So I have all the layers and all the sprites as individual layers visible. In Photoshop you just, it's really quite cool. You just go file, export, layers to files. So as long as I've selected visible layers only, uh, just the visible layers will be exported. So I run it, magic happens. It's uh, Photoshop is automatically creating files of each and every layer. It's almost done. All right, it's done. Next, once I've got all the files, I put them in a file folder, whatever you're in, Windows, Mac, I'm on a Mac. And uh, then I use this other program called Texture Packer. So I quickly add all the sprites, it creates them, it puts them into this file here. You can see them all moving around. Uh, I set up some the data. I'm using the CreateJS easel for creating box critters right now. I've also been looking at the new Pixie JS. They just did a nice new update and I've been exploring that one. Um, this is just a framework for JavaScript, really, is what it is. I select what the output format I want. I want these as PNGs. You select the sizes, and everything I'm doing in Box Critters is about half scale. So I'm drawing everything actually larger and then shrinking it. And that's for later. So when we go to mobile or something, I'm going to need the larger version. The magic here is actually this crop and keep position. So when Photoshop exported the files, it actually exports them to the size of the background. And I'll quickly show that to you here. If I actually turn this off, go to none, you'll see that, I'll zoom out, that each of these um, sprites are actually a very large uh, image. And then it positions the sprite into the scene. And if I leave it without the trimming, of course, it's going to make giant sprites that the sprite sheet's too large. Uh, the goal here is, of course, to get things small and compact for the internet and downloading. Um, the reason I went with this, actually, this took me about a month to figure this out, is that if I export the large image and I know where it's positioned, this allows me to know that this, this console or this chair here is positioned at this point in orientation to the zero, zero of the background. When I activate the crop, Keep in flat, uh, keep position. It just crops around the known object, but its orientation is set to the background. So that's awesome. So I get the math for where is it positioned, and then when you open it up, beautiful part of this uh, texture backer is you can then move around this little pivot point. So I place the pivot point here. Uh, the pivot point, even in Club Penguin, this was the the magic of how we did all the rooms. Pivot point uh, characters are actually just on layers. They're sorted by depth. The higher up on the screen or the lower your Y position is on the screen, the further behind objects you were, you were stacked behind it. And as you got to the bottom end of your screen, which is a larger Y coordinate position, we put you on the top of the screen. The trick or the magic is, is having these pivot points. And the pivot point is at what point I, I use the pivot point. Pivot point usually is used for the rotation, but the pivot point I use it for um, when a character passes the position of the pivot point, then I know it's behind this object. So I set all the pivot points on each of the objects. Now set. 
I publish it and it creates a JSON in a image file for me. I switch to brackets here. I use just a simple little brackets usually for all my coding. I enjoy just working in basically a text editor. I know some people like the larger applications that help them organize, but I enjoy this one. So you get this quick little output. Uh, mine's a little different than your default for Texture Packer. I added these two extra numbers on the end here. Uh, you can modify and build templates in Texture Packer. So feel free if you, if you need them, go for it. Uh, but overall, you're going to get actually just these numbers here. And uh, quick little thing. You also get the, of course, the background image and the sprite sheet. Now you'll notice that the sprite sheet, how, how it works in this JSON file is each of these in the array here is a sprite and each sprite has different coordinates and position. So this first sprite is located at a position of 1, 1 is 86 pixels wide by 226 pixels tall. And that is of course this wall here. So 1, 1 is right over here. Uh, you know, on that number, that 86 or 200 is right down here. So it's going to cut, it's essentially cutting out this piece of the image to create one sprite. Zero is a reference to what sprite sheet you're supposed to use. You'll notice up here there's an images and um, it's an array. And the first image in that array is the bridge sprite sheet. And so, of course, it's the first one in an array. And most programming, uh, your first number is zero, so zero. Then the next two numbers, this came from Texture Packer, is the pivot point. So if it's 86 pixels wide, 36 pixels in, so almost half, well, I guess a little bit more left of halfway, and then of course 217 down of the 226 tall, so almost near the bottom. And this is where it positions the pivot point. The two extra numbers I, I added was from Texture Packer. It has behind the scenes that's going on. It knows where the actual uh, zero, 00 position is of the source image. So I'm calculating but the, diff the distance from the pivot point to the zero, 00 point. So I can place the object on the scene. So this wall will be located on the scene at 645 horizontal or X by 378Y, and then the rest of the objects are all here. Once you have this, you just put it into CreateJS or PixieJS or any system you're using for HTML5 that you enjoy, and uh, parse it through, and now you have all the data you need to lay out the little room. And then from the room, it's really just layers. It's just a background with each of these sprites placed on the screen. Right, so then have a, a pivot point. So as you see, the snail's behind the chair. And as he passes the pivot point, he goes in front of the chair. Well, thanks, guys. Look forward to seeing all your guys' projects. Have a great day.